Welcome to this video, which provides an overview of how to plan a distillery business. Before we start, if you like to see more videos from us, please push the subscribe button. What do we need to plan when starting a distillery? The basic question is if our business plan will be profitable and if it will lead to financial success. For this, we want to prepare a financial forecast over the next five years or more and find out how our business is expected to perform. For this video, we are using the distillery financial plan template from efinancialmodels.com. A link to the template referred to in this video is included in the description below. What topics do we need to cover when preparing a financial plan for a distillery business? We have to cover the normal topics as we have to do when preparing any financial plan. For a distillery, there are several topics which require special attention. One are the sources of revenues. Are there any other sources of revenues apart from the sale of liquor or distilled products? For instance, are there subsidies? Are there any revenues from offering tours on site? They all need to be included in the financial plan. The next aspect is production capacity. Many times, especially for small distilleries, production capacity is nearly fully used. This means when growing the business, there needs to be a plan put in place to expand this capacity. So we need to include this and we also need to allow that we can understand what will be the additional costs or financing requirements out of that expansion. Another specialty for distillery businesses are the alcohol taxes. These normally depend on where the liquor is being sold. So this means each market segment can trigger different types of liquor taxes. So apart from the production cost, it's important to include these liquor taxes also in your financial plan as accurately as possible. So now let's dive into how we actually can prepare a financial plan for a distillery. To put our financial plan together, the first thing we start is with the capital expenditures or the old investments needed to get our business started or expanded. And we simply list what types of assets we have to purchase. These are all fixed assets and what will be the total costs. We then also need to allocate them on the timeline and basically say which of these costs are going to be incurred in which years if this is going to be phased out. For fixed assets, this might also later on to annual maintenance capital expenditures. So this normally is a percentage of the initial expenses and we can also plan or take them into account. Another topic is a potential expansion of the business and we can also estimate the cost for an additional expansion step. In this case, for instance, we have different types of liquors or spirits and we also have a small tourism business where we basically look to attract as many visitors to our site as we can. The rest of our products are normally either measured in bottles or also in liters, depending how the financial plan should look like. We then continue and have a look on our planned sales volumes. And here, as you can see, this is sorted by market segment. And the reason is that we later on have to deal with liquor taxes, which apply, which are different from market to market and therefore we want to plan this by, by market segment. Each of these market segments is assigned to one of these product types and then we can forecast the volumes which in this case are reflected with a ramp up in the annual sales volumes and then also with a long-term growth in our sales. What you can see down here is that we then compare our forecast of the annual sales volumes with the available at capacity and here we need now to think about what will be what is our capacity and when do we need to bring online new capacity as you can see here we plan to sell more than what we have available in terms of production capacity so this means we need to expand our site and by bringing new capacity online we will then be able to produce the required sales volumes then we need to forecast the prices by market segment and as you can see here this we simply need to go through section by section in case they are changing or there are certain trends that these are reflected in our assumptions here. 
In terms of the cost estimations, as I said, we have to take into account variety of costs. First are the production costs. These are happening on a product type level or product group level. So these are different for each of these products. And then we also have to apply or to add a liquor tax depending on which market we are going to sell these products to. And this gives us then the direct costs and we can also double check that for each product what will be the foreseeable profit or gross profit margin. While direct costs are variable costs, we then also need to look at fixed costs. Normally these are starting with employee costs, which are also in this case can increase like jump fix costs, they can increase here reflecting increased volume in our business plan and other operating costs where we can simply assume their budget positions on a year by year basis. As you can see here, they're also expected to increase. Other assumptions to consider are interest rates and tax rates. In a model, we can normally just input an assumption and the model will calculate the resulting interest and tax expenses. Once this is put together, we can have a first glimpse at our business plan and see how our business is expected to evolve. And depending how this looks like, we might go back and change some of our assumptions until we are fully comfortable that this business plan is what we are going to do. Another trick here in this business plan is to do a deep dive in terms of the gross profit contributions and have a closer look where the, gross, the expected gross profit uh, should come from, from which products and how is this going to evolve over time. Another way to look at this is to have a look at the break-even points. This break-even analysis allows us to go several years out until the sales volumes have been stabilized and then to compare what are the break-even prices for each product and how does our business plan compare to those prices. A financial plan does not only include a profit and loss statement but should also include a cash flow forecast. And for this, we need the balance sheet and a forecasted balance sheet, and we need a forecasted cash flow statement, which will tell us how much cash is going in and out on an annual basis, what types of cash flows there are, and what will be the resulting cash balance end of year. What we also want to do is to have a look at the first year's budget. We have here one sheet where we can simply allocate the annual uh, volumes or the annual costs to a monthly basis and then in this case allows us to fine-tune the budget for year one and then we can also see how the cash balance is going to develop during that year. This model will calculate how much funding will be required and as you can see here the funding positions will be all the capex item we need to get our business started but then also since we are growing this business, in this case from scratch, all the inventory receivable needs to be financed and this also requires financing. Depending on our business plan, we might have assets which can be financed by debt, if we can get some debt financing. If yes, we can enter this and this will then reduce our equity position. As you can see, this financial plan will one day lead to zero cash balance. So what we want to do is to add some cash buffer so that we don't get to fully to zero one day. So in this case, let's round up a bit the equity financing amount. Let's do this here via a goal seek. And let's just round, put in a rounded number. And we simply use the cash reserve to do that. And then this cash reserve will stay on the balance sheet. Now that we have figured out how much financing we need, where does the financing come from? We know how much equity financing we need. We can have a look what this means in terms of bringing in new investors. As you can see here, we have this funding need of 4 million in this case. And we don't really need everything in year one. So what we can do in this case, we can split our funding rounds in two phases, round A and round B and then for these rounds give away equity stakes to investors for investing into our business and you can see in this case that would be the plan we give away a certain equity stakes in round one 
in round two. In this case, only two rounds, and then this will also lead to a dilution by the founders. So we might want to get some clarity how many funding rounds will be needed, and this model in this case will give you a good tool to figure this out. To wrap up, all what we need to do is to have a last final look at our plan and fine tune our assumptions as needed. We also might have to discuss about the debt repayment plan, which is of ac acceptable to banks. And so it would be good to have our plan together, how we're going to repay the debt. And this goes on and on. There are a lot of parameters to look at and they have to, to get to a conclusion. And this will result in financial metrics of your plan. In this case, it's an, an IRR calculated which tells us how attractive this project is. And we can then also calculate with more precision what would be the IRRs for different investors depending on how much equity stake they get by participating in this project. What we want to do at the end is to also think a bit about scenarios, especially downside scenarios. And one way to get started with this is to have a look at this sensitivity analysis, which basically lists which of our assumptions will have the biggest impact in this case on our IRRs. And we can better understand if any change of these assumptions, how it will affect the model and especially those which have a big impact on the model. In this case, a 10% increase has a quite a dramatic impact on the IRR this then is would be a good way to to get some ideas of how to fine tune the model further the assumptions can be changed at any time and also it should be possible to run different scenarios of your financial plan so that you better understand how to how any change in the scenario assumptions will affect the financial outcome so I hope this video gave you a good overview how to prepare a financial plan for a distillery business. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and visit our website efinancialmodels.com. A link to the financial model template is included in the description below. Thank you for watching.